Hey everybody and welcome to the BWC online Bible study. Today we are looking at Exodus chapter 3. As we look at Exodus chapter 3, we're going to be talking about Moses in the burning bush. We're going to be talking about um, God speaking to us, giving us a message, and then our willingness to obey and do what He asks us to do. You know, when God asks us to do something, sometimes it doesn't always make sense to us or um, or we might be afraid or we might think we're not good enough to do whatever it is that God's asking of us. But the question is, is will we trust Him enough to do what He asks even when we don't feel adequate? So we're going to talk about that some more as we go along, as we dig into the words. So I hope you'll open up your Bible and begin to read with me today. You know, that's the point of this Bible study is for us to get more comfortable in our word, to... Um, to dig into our Bibles and to um, and to really grow in our relationship with God, because when you take the time to hear what He has to say, you're growing in not just information and knowledge, but you're growing in relationship with Him. Because Scripture tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and um, and then it goes on to tell us that Jesus is the Word made flesh. And so when we're spending time in the Word, really we're spending time with Jesus. Jesus, and we are um, we're learning and we're growing. And so, as we as we talk about this today, we're gonna um, we'll we'll talk more as we go along. So I'm gonna start reading to you um, Exodus three verse one. It says, "One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God." There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed with flames, it did not burn up. This was amazing. Moses said to himself, why isn't the bush burning up? I must go see. So it wasn't unusual that there be a fire, but it was a different type of fire. And this fire was not consuming the bush. And so it caught his eye and, and kind of drew him in. It says, when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. So Moses knew that he was Hebrew and he felt this connection to the Hebrew people. And he had been trained by his mother at a very young age to know who God was. And so there's this reverential fear that he didn't want to turn his eyes to the Lord, you know, because he understands who, well, in part, he understands who God is as much as any of us can understand who God is. Um, and I thought it was very interesting, you know, the part two where he says, take off your sandals for you standing on holy ground. I don't know if you've ever seen um, a Christian artist or someone who is um, who is coming to sing or to, to do something for the Lord and you've seen them take their shoes off. And so part of that comes from this scripture, you know, when we are in the presence of a holy God, he's telling him that, that, that he is standing on holy ground. And um, as he comes closer to this bush that is drawing him into the presence of the Lord. It says, Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. And so I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile, spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites now live. So this is land that God had promised to Abraham, to the descendants of Abraham. And there were other people occupying it at this time. But, you know, everything belongs to the Lord and the Lord was going to set things back right. He was going to take the people of Israel who were um, 
in slavery in the land of Egypt and he's going to take them out of Egypt and he's going to bring them back to the place um, that he had called them to originally. It says, Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians have abused them. Now go, for I am sending you to the Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. So this burden that God had placed on the inside of Moses' heart was there for a reason, because God was going to use Moses to be a blessing to the people of Israel. I don't know if you've ever had that happen with you before. I know I have, like for God to put a burden for somebody on your heart or a burden for a group of people or a certain thing on your heart. You know, I was listening to somebody that was um, talking about foster care and the burden that God had put, put on their heart to um, to be involved in this, to to help these children that, that so desperately needed help. Um, I know that there are, are certain people in certain places that, that God has put a burden on my heart for and the things that he calls me to do. And so that is the same thing that happened with Moses. Like he didn't handle it right in his youth. Um, and and ended up in the wilderness but also you, if you think about it this wilderness time that moses had is time that god is using to prepare him to be ready to do what god's calling him to do now you know he's it, it's quite a big call that he's just placed on moses and um and he didn't ask him if he wanted to go he's telling moses go it says, now go, for I am sending you to the Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God. So a minute ago, he's just so in awe of God and, and standing in his presence and taking off his shoes on holy ground and, you know, won't even look into the bush. And now God's asking something of him and he's ready to argue with God. Um who am I to appear before Pharaoh? So this is fear talking because he realizes who the Pharaoh is. He was he was raised in the house of the Pharaoh, so he understands how things work. Um, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? Well, I'll tell you who he is. He's the one that God was telling to go. So, um, so if God is, like I said, place a burden on your heart to do something, know that he's going to be there with you in the middle of that. And, and that was exactly right for Moses too. You know, and it, like I said, in his youth, he, he tried to go about it the wrong way, but now he's going to be doing it in God's timing, following God's instructions. And it says, God answered, I will be with you, and this is your sign, that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought my people out of Egypt, you will go and worship God at the very mountain. Okay, he says, I will be with you, and this will be your sign that I'm the one that sent you. So when you've brought the people out of Egypt, you will go and worship on this very mountain. So this place that he's standing on right now, this holy ground, this burning bush, the sign that I mean, God's standing there talking to him. So, um, so the fact that God has brought him to this place and is giving him this instruction, and he's going to bring them back to this very place that God is showing them. Um, it's also interesting to me that the sign is going to come after the obedience. You know, he he's telling him, you know, the sign is going to be when you've brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. So a lot of times we're looking for a sign ahead of time. Now, I think it's quite a big sign that God's giving him the instructions in the first place. But you see here that God's telling him the sign is going to come afterward. When you have obeyed God, then you'll see the sign that this is what I've called you to do. You know, if you think about that, um, if you think about that when God called Joseph as well, he gave him a vision. He told him about the future, but the sign that he had actually obeyed God and done what God wanted him to do came after the obedience um, when his brothers actually did bow down to him and he saw that what God had told him initially is what actually happened. That's the sign. When God instructs you and then you obey him and then afterward you see that what he told you in the first place is what really happened. 
I'm excited about that. That's a good word. Um, it said, um, God answered, I will be with you. Okay, so we already we already went through that. Verse 13, but Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your ancestors has sent me, they will ask me, what is his name? And then what shall I tell them? So um, God replies to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. You know, when Jesus is standing um, about to be arrested and they're coming at him, he says the same thing. He says, I am. And then all of the soldiers, um, the people coming against him fall out, you know, at the speaking of that name. And so he is. He, he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the one who sent Jesus to come and um, redeem us from our sins. He is who he says he is, and he'll do the things he says he'll do. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Now go and call together the elders of Israel. Tell them, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me. He told me, I have been watching closely and I have seen the Egyptians and how they are treating you. I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to the land of milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites now live. The elders of Israel will accept your message. So he's telling him, I'm going to be with you. Go do what I'm telling you to do. And this is what's going to happen. And he says, And then the elders must go to the king and tell him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us, so please take us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord. But I know the king of Egypt will not let you go <clears throat> unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. And then, at last, he will let you go. I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you, and they will give you gifts, and when you go, you will not leave empty-handed. Every Israelite woman will ask for articles of silver and gold and fine clothing from her Egyptian neighbors, from the foreign women in their houses. You will dress your sons and your daughters with these, stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. So we're going to talk more about this next week. That's the end of Exodus chapter 3. But as we think about, you know, just really what we've talked about today, you know, we talked about Moses not feeling good enough to do what God's asked him to do. Like this is a big task that God is asking of him. And he feels like, who am I to do this? Even though God is telling him that he's going to go with him. We talked about that burden that God places on your heart. Um, that's usually part of the call that he has for you, the things that he has for you to do. And how when we hear that direction from God, we need to get into obedience with him and as we get into obedience with him on the other side of all the things that go down in the process is is the sign that we'll look back and see how god was with us and how he used us and how we had obeyed him and um and then you know at the end to know that god's giving very clear instructions to moses not just for what for him to do but but the things that will happen when he does he's telling him this isn't gonna go smoothly like like there's gonna be resistance I'm gonna have to do some stuff to make this happen and um, and so a lot of times when we're hearing those instructions ahead of time we just hear the exciting part that God wants us to do now Moses wasn't excited he was terrified um, which it's that way sometimes a lot of times too um, but but the instructions all the little parts and pieces that when we really don't fully understand what's going on how it is that um, that sometimes we we can look back and remember exactly what God told us like yes God told us this was going to happen there's a lot of stuff going on like end times revelation stuff that we see happening in the world right now and people are freaking out but 
should we really be freaking out because God told us already that this was going to happen. So that's what I want to leave you with today. Exodus chapter 2. Um, listen to the voice of God. Be willing to obey Him when He puts a burden on your heart for something. Um, you know, not just something that you want to do yourself, but when God puts that burden on your heart. Um, be be ready and willing to listen for the instructions when the time comes you know it's not always immediately he had had this burden on his heart since he was a kid you know and here we are some 40 something years later and god's going to use him in that at this moment you know everything that happens in that in between is preparation time so um so listen to the voice of God, pay attention to those burdens that he places on your heart and be willing to obey him when it comes time for, um, for you to do what he's asked you to do. You guys be blessed. Have a really great day and I will catch you back again in Exodus chapter four.